First we see the birth of Venus, done in 1480 uh, by Sandro Botticelli in Tempera. Sandro Botticelli was a Florentine artist. Uh, Venus was born full grown from the foam of the Mediterranean. The figures are to painting what relief sculpture is to sculpture. Uh, it's a little volume, lighter than air. Uh, Botticelli had an interest in linear contours, the drapery billows. Botticelli seems to have modelled Venus after the Greek statue Aphrodite of Nidos, which was made um, or copied by the Romans, and both have kind of a deformed left arm. Classical mythology at the time had been shown to be very pagan, or seen to be very pagan by the Catholic society, and Botticelli used Plato's philosophical ideas of Neoplatonism to suggest that the visible world is a poor reflection of the ideal world and that Venus is just a poor reflection of Mary. Uh, a typical of Florentines, there's an emphasis on line. Next we see a painting done in tempering oil on wood panel titled Old Man and Grandson by Domenico Ghirlandaio. Uh, it was done in about 1480. It's reminiscent of Flemish art. Um, from Belgium, or what was called Flanders at the time. It's domestic, it's down to earth. The theme is similar to Northern artists where the oil was revived. Um, the feeling of empathy that is expressed is more of an Italian style, however, and it's not glossy like Flemish art. So it's an interesting combination of both Flemish art and Italian style, which Ghirlandaio was, was known for. In the background, I seem to remember, I'm not sure why, that that may be Mount Vesuvius, although uh, that may not be Mount Vesuvius. In any way, it's an interesting, interesting piece of work. Next, we see Saint Sebastian done by Andre Mantegna, done in Tempera in northern Italy in the, in the town of Padua, P A D U A. And Mantegna was very interested in Roman archaeology and most of his paintings reveal uh, artifacts from antiquity. He has kind of an intense preoccupation with this. Uh, it's similar to the Arc of Severus, sometimes pierced with only one single arrow. It's shown um, he survives and is martyred again in St. Sebastian. Here, uh, Montegna is paying attention to anatomy. The contrapposto curve is not very convincing. Uh, the sculptural quality is kind of an influence of Donatello, perhaps. There's natural light and atmosphere which is a northern influence, a Flemish influence. And if you look very closely, you'll see how the clouds have a horse, possibly... Paintings um, right hand the corner, it's possibly the horse passing by. Horse. You'll see it in just a second. Here we see Madonna and Saints, done by Bellino Giovanni. Uh, 1505 circa. Uh, from 1400 to 1490, that was the early Renaissance, and now we're moving into the high Renaissance, which was kind of where the middle of the Renaissance was. Um, this is a sacred conversation. There's a Flemish style, or a Flemish interest in light. The warm color is characteristic of the Venetians. Uh, the Venetians had a much more of an interest in color, whereas the Florentines had a kind of a preoccupation with line. So we see an interesting color here. Bellini is his last name, but it goes by Giovanni. He was probably born in Venice. His family were some of the most well-known Venetian artists. Moving into the High Renaissance, here we see Da Vinci's The Virgin of the Rock, so uh, 1485 or so. It's oil on panel. There is one in the Louvre and one in the National Gallery. It was quite a common thing to do to make authentic replicas, two versions of the same painting. Here we see Mary, Jesus, an angel, and St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist is identifiable by the animal skins, which he often wore, that's his trademark, and he is actually the one under the right hand of Mary. Mary is serving as kind of an intermediary from God, uh, reminiscent of perhaps the church, protecting the people, John the Baptist. Uh, in the background you see kind of the foggy style of fumato which Da Vinci was famed for. It's a smoky, hazy atmosphere uh, of many layers of tempera. It's a poetic version. Uh, it ties in with Horace's paintings should emulate poetry, perhaps. Um, He's moving beyond linear clarity. Not that this one needs a title, but this, of course, is the Mona Lisa. 
from about 1503 to 1505 by Leonardo da Vinci. It's got this pomato as well. It's, she's enveloped in kind of a smoky fog. Uh, it's portraiture and it's idealization. She's the wife of an Italian merchant who didn't actually like the result. So Francis I was given the painting. It was stolen from the Louvre in 1911 by an Italian who claimed it belonged in Italy. There are several versions of this made, perhaps. And this one at the Louvre may not, in fact, be the original. Some claimed the crackling, uh, or the crackle in French, didn't match the original pre-1911 after it was uh, received back. Other claimed that paintings revealed the intention of a man's soul. Here we see the Tempietto of the Little Temple done by Donato Bramante. Uh, the focus of the High Renaissance was in Rome. The papacy became more powerful. New, bigger churches and sculptures and paintings were, were created, uh, especially Julius II. He was a pope with grandiosity. He hired uh, Michelangelo and Raphael. Circular temples were reminiscent of Greek and Roman antiquity. There may have been some influence between this and St. Paul's uh, Cathedral's dome. The floor plan shows a central plan building. A circle was considered at the time a perfect shape. Um, it has both convex and concave shapes. It's a nice contrast. It's typical of like a rena uh, Renaissance balance of horizontals and verticals. And the columns are uh, Doric, they're Tuscan Doric. The Dome of St. Peter's Basilica, built around 1550 by Michelangelo, is part of the largest church in Christendom. The dome is nine stories high, dwarfing the altar beneath it. Twin ribs turn into twin columnets, and twin columns hide buttresses. The Dome of St. Peter's represents the reintroduction of concrete, which hadn't been used since the Romans. The dome is made of two shells with space in between them. Next is the sculpture of David done by Michelangelo in a heroic nude style. It's above 12 feet tall. Artists began being recognized as individuals, not only craftsmen, and they became viewed as almost geniuses, and Michelangelo was certainly one of these. I said genius meant divine inspiration and called Michelangelo divine. Michelangelo's, Don or Michelangelo's David, just like Donatello's David, shows no action. Dead, like St. George, shows attention. Perhaps an inner struggle between body and soul, and materialism as was the time. Michelangelo's David is known as the symbol of Florence.